Hello. Ah, hello, hello. Hi, how are you guys? Um, I have two announcements today. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, first announcement. The 27th of December at 6 p.m. London time. The first ever archaeological debate in the metaverse and will be uh, on the co it will be between Louis de Cordier and uh, David Miano from World of Antiquity they will debate over the existence of the labyrinth of Hawara uh, it will be really amazing <laughs> and uh, can't wait to start how can you participate so it's easy you go on special.io and look for the space which is called Costco Labyrinth. So I will, uh, I, I will put the link in the description, uh, so it will be easy. And that's it. Just click on it, and you are in the show. So, and you can also participate. You can also ask ask, uh, ask questions after the debate. So it's gonna be really cool. Uh, another announcement: the 28th, so the day the day after, uh, I'm going to Turin in Italy um, and uh, to visit the Egyptian Museum so that would be great uh, and yeah and I'm gonna make a video uh, on that so yeah I mean, really cool yeah really cool so without further ado I don't know how you say it um, let's begin with today's video so let me put it uh, full screen okay so uh, Sanakt. Sanakt in principle was the son of... Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. So it was the son of the guy that made the layer pyramid, which was uh, second cat, if I'm not wrong. And... Uh, oh, sorry, was Kaba. <laughs> yeah, was not second cat, was Kaba. And um, so basically Sanakt, what we know is that he built uh, Emma Staba as... I mean, it's crazy, I'm gonna tell you very soon. Amastaba in Beit Kalaf. So I didn't know this site before, so I I, to I was totally new to this, so it took me a little bit of time. But now I have enough information to share with you. So we are still in the third dynasty before the the you know before the fourth dynasty, obviously <laughs> before the big pyramids coming. But basically, uh, well, let's just start. Let's just start. Shut up, Leo. <laughs> So this is the Google Map uh, view of the Nile Valley over Beit Kalaf. So Beit Kalaf is like a, a small village here. The site that we will uh, study today is this one here. The, and then, and in front you have this city. Uh, my mouse is crazy. Okay, uh, you have this one. Uh, this city, which uh, is supposed to be uh, the old ancient site of Tinis, but not not all of the archaeologists um, are sure of that. So just just so you know, so we are just 20 kilometers north of Abydos. So we, we in this moment, this is uh, center Egypt. So it's not north, it's not south, it's in the center. Oh, again, my mouse is going crazy. So let's just take the mouse out. Uh, so. This is the site, as I was... I can't... I actually is better with the mouse. Sorry, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't go crazy. So this is the site, and you, you can see this is the village, and... My god, my <laughs> the mouse is going crazy. And uh, this is the Mastaba K1. This is the Mastaba K2. And then there are other three. So there are in total like... Uh, five or six Mastabas in this area, but the biggest obviously is this one here. Now this one... Is K1. K1 seemed to have belonged to Djoser. And now you, you're you gonna ask me, really? Like, why? He just built a big step, the first ever pyramid in Saqqara. Why he built this? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna tell you very soon what we are talking about. So as you can see, this is the uh, K1. It's a huge mastaba. It's like 80 meters by 30, like 45. And then you have K2 here. Um, K stands for Kalaf, so Beit Kalaf. And uh, this is K2. This is the the one of uh, Sanat. And in this in this site, you have other stuff uh, which uh, I can't 
I mean, I'm not sure what there is down here, obviously, because I can't tell from Google Maps, but, uh, but there are definitely other things uh, around this area. Uh, now, the interesting thing is that this area was prohibited to visit uh, along the middle, like along the centuries for locals, because they believe that this was uh, kind of, uh, like in a superstitious way, was out of reach, like you couldn't go. Uh, but so yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, also, because some people believe that these actually were ruins from a Roman like fort or castle, but uh, it turns out, thanks to John uh, John Garstang in 1901, that these are actually ruins from the from ancient Egypt. Uh, very ancient Egypt. <laughs> so this is the guy that is responsible <laughs> for what we know. And thanks to this guy, we know we do, you know we know what we know about this area, which is not much. We don't know much about this uh, area. So today I will talk about the K1 and K2. And so this is the plan he designed. He designed. So he he drawn. Uh, on his book, which uh, if I not remember wrong, is called uh, Mahasna and uh, uh, Mahasna and Beit Kalaf, something like that, and uh, it's uh, it's from 1903, so very old <laughs> book. And as you can see, there are many sites, Mahasna here, for example, and uh, other, uh, our our Beit Kalaf stabas are in this area here. And he found way more stuff. He also found some prehistoric cemeteries and prehistoric settlements. Like it's, it's a site full of things. Now it's not uh, beaten by the tourist uh, path, but anyway, it will it, it does deserve here uh, to visit. Mastaba K1. So let's begin with Mastaba K1. Uh, he, he, yeah, so this is how uh, it would have looked like back in the times from Garstang, 1901. And uh, you can see already that there are a few uh, holes yeah, on it. And probably these holes. Uh, so if you if you hear the audio of the mouse, is the mouse. Sorry. <laughs> like, um, I will actually change the mouse. <laughs> um, so uh, I was saying, if you see any holes here, is because uh, this tomb was plundered and replundered uh, in the in the centuries and uh, this is when it this is a picture of the excavation site so when they were excavating and you can see already from here this is a mud brick tomb okay but funny thing is that inside of this tomb like obviously Amastaba as you know there is always a substructure and a, and a superstructure the superstructure was mud brick the substructure was always you know as always carved in the backdrop and uh, but this one in specific had uh, limestone walls in the chamber, but I don't have the pictures. <laughs> but yeah, that's also why they believe this was so, uh, belonged to Joser. Um, so, yeah, not crazy good pictures, but here is what we have. And uh, you can see this is a mud brick, super tall building, it's like 8 meters what is left. And uh, yeah, the locals in this uh, at this point they they were not afraid anymore to come to the, visit the place. And this is how it looked nowadays, thanks to Meret Zeger books. Uh, actually, uh, they told me I could uh, just ask them for pictures without the watermarks, but uh, I, I don't mind. Like uh, I don't mind. Like if you just visit Meret Zeger books website, and there are way there are super interesting pictures there from ancient Egypt sites. Um, so, yeah, so this is what's left nowadays. And it's crazy, isn't it? Like, it's what, probably one of the big, it's definitely one of the biggest mastaba uh, I ever uh, studied. And this is the magical plan. <laughs> so, how beautiful is this plan, right? I mean, you don't need to be an architect, right? You can just what? You can just look at it, you know. So imagine it's all. So you, you can see here there is a thickness of two meters. This is a like a, it's not an enclosure wall. It's the wall of the mastaba. But inside the black area was um, gra desert gravel and uh, debris, stones, and a lot of mortar. 
So basically they're creating an artificial mountain with uh, what they had. And then they excavated the entrance here, but it, I think this is an, uh, a fake entrance. I think the entrance is this one here, and apparently this entrance is from the top. So you gotta have to climb the mastab if you want it to go down in the substructure. But even if you make it uh, to find the entrance, uh, you will encounter five, five <laughs> portcullis stones. And <laughs> they just they just wanted to be sure that nobody were entering this place, but guess what? Somebody did. <laughs> so you had beautiful plan. This is a stair going down from east, which is interesting. And uh, and then there is a north side, a north south alignment. Now it's not north side, north south precisely. It's 16 degrees uh, tilted. And there are these five portcullis so stones, uh, huge ones uh, in limestone. And this corridor. And then you have these layout so these so, uh, as far as i understood archaeologists believe that the burial chambers of this dynasty and dynasty 2 uh, were based on a layout of uh, like the royal palace but i personally never found any royal palace uh, basically at this point in the old kingdom uh, the egyptians dedicated all of the good materials to build funerary complexes and tombs and pyramids and all of the day, you know, day by day buildings they were doing in mud bricks. So this is why, as far as we know, uh, we don't have any other buildings rather than religious buildings, right? That's a story. And so this is the section. Uh, as you can see, this goes down like 28 meters, something like that. Now, finally, and <laughs> finally, I suspected it before, but finally, this is kind of the proof that tells, that tells us that the sh vertical shafts were used to basically put the portcullis stones in place, okay? Uh, which is very interesting. But I also found out that, for example, here you have vertical shafts, and some vertical shafts were used for offerings. So basically, I don't know, somehow some people will climb the mastaba, putting some stone vessels inside of this vertical shaft that would, you know, help uh, the, the ka of the, of the pharaoh to make it through the underground, through, through, the, through the underworld. Uh, one very interesting thing, feature here, is that this whole thing, as far as I understood, it's an arch uh, thing. Like <laughs> there is an arch, there is a vault. Uh, now maybe, like maybe not this tunnel was that the whole tunnel was not like a vault, like a vaulted ceiling. Uh, but definitely this chamber was. And well, anyway, I'm gonna show you the pictures. So as I was saying, like uh, there was the entrance here, then uh, there was like, I don't know, I found out that there was a door here somehow, but anyway. And then you will start the corridor and then you have the boreals. And uh, now, yeah, as I was saying to you, this will be like the palace and in the palace, they had the bathroom <laughs> and the closet and the lavatory, which I don't know what I really like, what is it, like a, sh like a shower place? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so what's uh, what's important here is that uh, you have this amazing, uh, beautiful plan, and I don't know, I don't have any words <laughs> to describe this. Um, that was K1, and uh, in K1, very interesting facts, which uh, I wanted to tell you, is that they found a skeleton of a man, and, uh, and they found the name of the mother of Djoser there, so that's also why they believe um, it was a Djoser place, you know. Then, uh, in then now we have uh, Mastaba K2. Uh, this is the actual one from Sanakt. Now, we are not 100% sure if it was Sanakt's place, but we found the skull, the skull of somebody uh, that uh, was like 1.9 meters tall and uh, by that time 1.9 meters tall was a like kind of a beast you know like a giant person and 
Yeah, I mean, some archaeologists, but there's a minority, believe that that skull belongs to Sanak to himself. So this might have been the first, this might be the first pharaoh we ever uh, find <laughs> in a tomb. But we are not sure, obviously, how can you be sure? But anyway, so this is what uh, used to look like back in the times. It's a little bit of a mess because it's all basically destroyed. It's just the substructure that is left a little bit. Uh, this is a very interesting. This is a portcullis stone, which is still in place. Eh? Crazy, yeah? And this is a rough plaster, kinda. You know. Oh, this mouse. <laughs> and this is the plan. You can see it's very similar to the previous one, but this is very particular because it has two different boreal places, you see? So you have the stairs, uh, the same way that the other one, so from the east to the west, and then a corridor north to south, uh, portcullis stones, and then you have the actual burial chamber, which is composed by different niches and small chambers. Um, also, you have here the leftover of what could have been potentially a ramp. Oh my god, this mouse. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, this is pretty similar to the other one. Now you can see here the section, and from the section you can see the, the, the actual stairs are super steep, like 50, more than 50 degrees. Eh? And, um, ah, and also here this is the archway, uh, so basically, ah, guys, I don't know where it was, if it was in this tunnel here or, or somewhere like, but basically there is uh, an archway, and yes, yes, yes. Because I remember in Polytechnic of Milan they say no 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 the arch was invented by the Romans and they will show you the you know the pictures of the you know the aqueducts and stuff uh, yeah cool yeah oh my god so genius and then you, here it is <laughs> two thousand five hundred years before the Romans or two thousand years before the Romans so thank Polytechnic of Milan for <laughs> for helping <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so this is, is, you know, this is the section, this is the plan, as I was telling you, so it's like 25 meters by 65, it's smaller than the other one, and uh, this is the skull, potentially, of uh, Sanakt. Uh, yeah, there is a little bit something here, like he probably got some, I guess, some, whatever, <laughs> something happened to him, this guy, I don't know. Um, this... So basically, they found uh, the the so basically the, the largest chamber. So basically, should be like probably this one here or this one, whatever, like one of these ones. The they found the a coffin sarcophagus, uh, sarcophagus, coffin like box, like coffin, a wooden coffin, and inside they found the body of uh, of this guy, uh, the body, the bones. And uh, the wooden coffin was eaten by the ants. <laughs> this is what they say in the reports. And um, but yeah, so so th this is what is left. And I don't know where this skull is at the moment. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it should have been like it should be. It, sh it deserves to be in the Great Egyptian Museum, but let's see. I, I don't think. I don't know. Okay, so this is a contentious thing. So basically, I heard, I, I, I read uh, from like uh, some articles online that uh, Manitho, in the Egyptian book number two, he mentioned Sanak to be like this giant, but it's not true. Uh, he didn't mention Sanak. He mentioned Sesostris. Sesostris in is the Greek name for Senusret. Uh, it's Middle Kingdom, so it's not the same guy. Okay. A as far as I understood, okay. So if you wanna, if you have anything to say, tell me in the in the comments. But this is as far as. Uh, but also was very funny too because in the same sentence he talks about the labyrinth of Egypt, <laughs> which is, is so crazy. It's, just, it's actually the right time. Um, yeah. So, guys, next uh, we will do the um, pyramids because he did way more than one pyramid. He like scattered many pyramids all over Egypt from north to south. This guy name was Huni. And Huni was the father of Snof Sneferu, 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 whatever, how I wanna call him, which was the father of Khufu. So we are 
two, like we are three kings away from the Great Pyramid of Giza, okay? Mm, we are very close, but from now to the Great Pyramid of Giza, is going, we are going to have uh, the episode on Huni, then we're going to have the episode on Mastaba 17, and then we will have the Broken Pyramid, the, the Banks Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, and finally the Great Pyramid. But yeah, it's going to take like one or two months more, so... Um, yeah, um, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do. If you like the video, do like button thing. And uh, don't forget about the event, uh, about the labyrinth. And uh, yeah, I think this was everything. I uh, hope, I hope I see you soon. Okay, bye bye.